So friends, this is the second part of the chromatography. And as we are done with the classification and the basics of chromatography, I'll just move on with the titled slide on the board. Paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography. Friends, when we classified in the last talk, the chromatography it was on the basis of stationary phase. You can also classify it geometrically, the chromatography. Chromatography can be classified in two dimension and three dimension. Two dimension, it is called planar chromatography and three dimension, it is called column chromatography. Question comes, why? When it is a planar chromatography, it is either a paper or a thin layer. And when it is a paper or a thin layer, it has only y and x-axis. When it's a cylindrical column, we very well know that it is no more a two-dimension. It is a three-dimension thing. Henceforth, over here, what we are going to learn now onwards is a sectional part of planar chromatography which can be divided into paper chromatography and thin layer chromatography. So friends, moving inside this classification and the details, you can see here, classification of chromatography on a different basis and that basis now will be a two-dimension and a three-dimension chromatography that is a planar chromatography and a column chromatography. You can again divide this planar chromatography into two. That is a paper chromatography and a thin layer chromatography. Now, when you have this planar chromatography divided into two, paper and thin, let us first substantially learn in general what is planar chromatography. Planar chromatography is a technique in which stationary phase is present on a plane which can be a paper or a glass of a variant size. If you are using it as a paper, we will later on call it paper chromatography. If you are using a glass, we will call it as a thin layer chromatography. But there should be something with only two axial parameters, that is the axis Y and the axis X. If a plane used is a paper, mind very well, it is not a paper, it is cellulose, then it is called paper chromatography, whereas if a glass is used, then it is called TLC, thin layer chromatography. And generally, when it is thin layer chromatography, silica gel G is used as a powder for the stationary phase prepared in different different solvents starting from water to methanol to ethanol to acrylonitriles and etc. Over here this term G stands for gypsum. So friends this is another way once you have classified this planar and column you can go in depth with the paper as well as DLC. So you are now getting an idea that when we say a planar chromatography it would be restricted at a later stage to either paper chromatography where cellulose can be a stationary phase for an example or an instance and when you have a thin layer chromatography silica gel can be a stationary phase. Now going more in detail with the paper chromatography, paper chromatography can be further classified into three. The ascending the descending and the circular chromatography. This chromatography involves placing a small drop of sample solution on a paper and the paper serves as a stationary phase. Pardon? I was telling that in paper chromatography, paper chromatography involves a piece of paper at the bottom of which you place a mixture. This mixture 
comprises of multiple samples and this paper made up of cellulose will serve as a stationary phase. If we are talking of the rational paper chromatography that is ascending paper chromatography at the bottom you have mobile phase and slowly and steadily this mobile phase will move upwards because of the capillary movement that happens in the piece of paper and this capillary movement happening in the piece of paper will help to separate from this drop a b c or the multiple fractions that you have see the second paragraph the mobile phase slowly travels along the paper and carries the sample in the direction and thus separates the components from the mixture so the components are finally dragged and separated as i told you this is a beautiful picture which can be demonstrated as there are three drops there is the sample at the bottom mobile phase with a wavy line as it moves up each sample will start traveling and they will get separated at different points this is just a small picture of a paper or a tlc you can guess it anyway this is the first type of a paper chromatography which is called circular chromatography what is so interesting this circular chromatography and why is it most i will make a comparison for you between two that is ascending and circular see in ascending there is a piece of paper a vessel filled with a mobile phase you have a spot at the bottom it is carried out it will result into a b c the spots get separated the same phenomena of the same methodology is happening but over here the piece of paper is a circular and you have a hole in the center from where the mobile phase will come out and there is a small line drawn over here where the same drop is placed four times why to get more precise and more accurate results so this is a subtype of paper chromatography where a paper is in square shape and is kept on a paltry dish the vessel is a paltry dish it is filled with mobile phase and travels through the paper from the center of the periphery means from this part and how a wick is made from the same paper and is used for the displacement of mobile phase from the reservoir that is the paltry dish to the paper same phenomena happens here but instead of putting one drop of mixture i am placing four different positions of the same mixture so i will get an exact value of the distance traveled by each spot and the error becomes minimum preciseness and accuracy becomes maximum ascending chromatography already explained to you the paper is kept hanging from a support into a jar filled with mobile phase such so that at the end of the paper touches the mobile phase the mobile phase run upward carrying with it the sample up till a particular height all the components of the mixture gets separated depending upon this term polarity which is the main theme behind the separation so if you have ascending versus circular and you are more interesting to get precise and accurate result i will rather to say ask you to follow the method of circular chromatography but for our bachelor's or master degree program or for a very basic research ascending 
chromatography is enough. Ascending will have two parts. Ascending paper, what you are learning as of now. Remember my words, when TLC will come, I am sure that ascending will be replaced by TLC. Why? We have it in our course. Descending chromatography is an actor failure. There is a vessel. On the top of the vessel, there is a disc in which liquid is filled. There is a cut in the center from where the paper is hung down. Spots are kept on the top and when the mobile face travels downwards, it is assumed that the spot will travel. Although the spot travels, but the results are not at all accurate, not at all precise. Sometimes, due to the force of gravity, there might be some changes occurring. So, between ascending, circular and descending, the technique descending is the most poor or a failure. You cannot use this technique. A process with same application of ascending chromatograph is demonstrated here only with the change in the flow of direction of the mobile face. Here the reservoir, rather than placing it in the bottom, is placed on the top. The sample here gets separated at the bottom of the paper rather than at the top. In all the types of chromatography, the sample that has more attraction towards cellulose takes more time to separate. This is the mechanism. What? If I have a mixture of A, B and C, A is getting separated slowly, which can be seen from this picture. It means A has more attraction towards the surface. The surface is made up of cellulose. Cellulose, by the way, is polar. Henceforth, we can say that A is more polar compared to B and C. This explanation, now I will do in the complete detail on a single sheet of paper to make it more clear to you people. See, I have a paper, something is filled at the bottom, which is called mobile face. There are a mixture of spots. Somewhere at the bottom, I just wanted to make a mixture out there. With the passage of time, this mobile phase will move up first, which we generally call the capillary direction or anti-gravity. One will get separated over here. Another will get separated over here. And another will get separated over here. So it is very clear. And although there is only one kind of a chemical as a mobile phase, all the three spots placed at the same spot are separated differently. It means A, B and C have different interaction with the surface. The one having more interaction with the surface will stick to let us identify the surface. Surface if paper, it is made up of cellulose. Cellulose is polar. So, if A is remaining the lowest, it means it is sticking most. And we know that like attracts like. So polar will attract polar. So cellulose will attract A. Therefore A among the three is more polar. So this is the application behind paper chromatograph. So now if I have benzene, toluene, and phenol, see what happens. I have to change these. Phenol among them is the most polar, so it will 
stick with the cellulose and move at a slowest rate. So now this will be my phenol. Benzene and toluene. Toluene is more non-polar and therefore less polar. Toluene will be at the top and benzene will be in the middle. So you can say most polar, least polar, mid polar. So this is how the phenomena of polarity works in paper chromatography. I think you are satisfied by this. If not, you can see the email ID right below. You can contact me at any time for your queries. So, the combination of ascending and circular can help you find out even the nature of your sample. If I have three samples A, B and C, but I don't know which of them is benzene, which of them is polyene, which of them is phenol, I am not sure. But after this experiment of ascending paper chromatography, the spot that is running out the most will have opposite nature to that of the surface. So if my surface is polar being cellulose, the spot running out quickly is non-polar and therefore it has to be toluene. Then comes benzene and the one that remains slow, that remains sticky to the surface has to be phenol. So this is the application of paper chromatography. Moving further, we had a term retention time, now is the term called RF, retardation factor. It is very simple, that always mobile phase will travel the maximum. So RF is equal to distance traveled by the sample divided by distance traveled by the mobile phase. Always remember that mobile phase travels the maximum distance. You can always remember this by a very beautiful example. If I have river and many small or big boat traveling in the river, assume this to be the path of river. Over here I have a cluster of three boat which will later on turn to be three samples. And this mobile phase will take them and this mobile phase will travel the longest. Because river travels farther than the boat. Never the boat is far and the river is behind. Remember this logic. So the blue spot will travel this much. Red. Over here and the green over here. So from these three spot, if someone asks me what is the RF value for A, B, and C, I can easily say that distance traveled by A divided by distance traveled by mobile phase, distance traveled by B divided by distance traveled by mobile phase and distance traveled by C divided by distance traveled by mobile phase is the RF value for each component that is separated. Always, always, always remember that the value of RF will be always less than 1. It can never cross 1. It can never cross 1. Remember So this is important. And this RT is retention time and it is RF it is retardation factor. Generally I say that two dimension it is retardation factor, three dimension is retention time. If you look into good books you will get these answers. Moving further, these are asked fundamentally as a numericals. Let us just go back a slide and compare these things, these two. See how I will compare. See what happened. If phenol was traveling the least, this, let it be phenol, according to the newer example, it will travel the least distance. If it travels the least distance, its RF will be the least. Remember very well, 
distance traveled by the component is numerator and when the numerator is less the answer will be less because numerator is directly proportional to rf more the numerator value more is the rf and numerator is nothing but the distance traveled by the same thing so this is the application of paper chronograph Another example where you have three spots, three values, and the total distance traveled by the mobile phase was assumed to be somewhat around 7.7. .7. Don't go with the values on the scale, it is just for the sake of understanding. RF value needs to be between 0 and 1. You can never cross 1. If the value is over 1 or less than 0, the calculation is wrong, mathematics is wrong. If the value is greater than 0.8 or lesser than 0.2, it is hard to interpret them. As always, the values must be between 0.3 to 0.6. And those separations are called to be nice or good separations. RF value is affected by temperature, it is affected by solvent, it is affected by the thickness of the spot, it is affected by the concentration of the sample, impurities in the sample and the type of paper you use. The more porous the paper, the poorer is the result. The less porous the paper, the good is the result. Temperature has to be maintained below the boiling point of the mobile phase. Assume your mobile phase is ether. and You are experimenting the thing at 40 degree. Ether will evaporate. If your mobile phase is acetone and you are doing a practical at 70 degree, there is no use. So always remember that the solvent which is used as mobile phase experiment must be performed below its boiling point. You cannot cross its boiling point. TLC has all things similar to paper, the only change is. In TLC, paper is replaced by a glass plate. On this glass plate, a paste of silica gel is stuck. Mobile phase as usual in paper chronography, spots as such and results as such. Although most of the things remains the same, ELC is more better than paper chronography. Now the question comes, why TLC is more better than paper chronography? Compared to paper chronography, TLC is more beneficial because in TLC, the mobile phase runs a little faster than paper, time consumption, because paper is more porous. In paper chronography, you must be careful of one thing, that you will be limited to use solvents as mobile phase. There will be restrictions. There will be restrictions in the use of solvents and mobile phase in paper because paper is made of cellulose. Cellulose must be non-reactive to mobile phase. Sometimes cellulose itself gets dissolved in mobile phase. Paper will get dissolved in mobile phase. No math, no results, nothing. Silica is inert compared to cellulose. So if paper has a range of 8 to 10 different mobile phase, I can bet that silica gel, that is TLC, has a 50 to 60 different mobile phase in the choice. Here the choice of using variety of mobile phase is easy as silica gel is more inert than cellulose. And separation is more better in TLC than in paper chromatography. So these are the three main major aspects which make TLC more better than paper chromatography. It's a simple explanation that it was a mixture on the left and on the right the components are getting separated. This is just a picture of how to prepare a TLC. Preparing a TLC is a very easy technique. I will not go in the experimental part. The slide is with you. You can go through it. 
you have n number of videos available on the website where you can get the method of preparing TLC but as it was a part of TLC I have placed it here but you must be clear now that what we were discussing was a planar chromatography a two dimensional chromatography as both paper and TLC paper made of a cellulose and TLC generally made of silica gel but TLC is more beneficial than paper chromatography there can be different different solvents used depending on their polarity ether, cyclohexane, toluene, chloroform, acetone, ethanol and methanol depending on their polarity. There are two different ways of visualizing the spot. Sometimes these components are visible directly. You can see directly. But sometimes you need to add some reagents. So for paper and for TLC, to see the spots you have two methods. A destructive method and a non-destructive method. Sometimes you need to spray amine hydrine, especially for amino acids. Sometimes you need to spray iodine or you need to keep them in iodine chamber where oxidation or reduction takes place and then after the components separated from the mixture react chemically with those components sprayed and then you get the color or a spot. This is called destructive method. Non-destructive method. You have a UV cabinet in which you place the TLC or the paper and see from the top you will directly be able to see the spots. And remember very well all the analytical techniques how good you explain they become more prominent when you look into in the real world. So try to get to some workshops where you get a chance to see these experiments then. And you will be happy to know that Shetham and Science College part and where I belong to, we have all these instruments with us and we do on a regular basis training workshops for these instrumentation. So it is an infinite technology chromatography. If gone to the two dimensional way that is planar, we discussed both that is paper and TLC. But still in the coming days, I'll be discussing with you UPLC, HPLC and GC, which comes under the three-dimensional technique called column chromatography. So friends, I'm thankful to you that we are on the verge of completing two lectures today. The first one was basics of chromatography and the second one now is TLC and paper chromatography, the parts of planar chromatography. Feel free to contact via phone or email for any of your queries anytime. We'll meet in the part 3 with some or other technique of column chromatography. Thank you.